Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Thursday. You have Alyssa Corman, Ken Shreve here with a look at the stock market today. We're going to break down the action in the major indexes. Tech stocks getting hit particularly hard today. Small caps, too, Ken. And uh, we did see some bright spots, though, to earnings-fueled movers in a big way. Yeah, so in the retail sector, we'll take a look at Williams-Sonoma, which gapped up powerfully on uh, earnings. Also a very bullish move for recent IPO upstart. And then we'll take a look at uh, Pinterest, which is... Uh, continuing to look weak after mm -hmm. getting some resistance at its 50-day moving average. Yeah, continuing lesson there for Pinterest. But first, a look at the NASDAQ here. The tech-heavy index getting slammed today, down over 3%. The Russell 2000 down 3% as well. The S&P 500 down 1.5% on the day. And the Dow, blue chips, down about a half a percent. So holding up the best uh, relatively here. So the NASDAQ uh, continuing to lag here, Ken, getting hit hard in a big way. The culprit those treasury yields. Yeah, another big move in the uh, the ten year Treasury yield uh, today. So again, the the bond market is really uh, kind of worried about inflation for the U.S. economy as it uh, as it reopens. And you know, the Fed meeting yesterday they raised their GDP forecast uh, quite a bit this year, all the way up to six and a half percent, I think, uh, up from a prior estimate of four point two percent. So, bond market is uh, worried about inflation. The Fed, not, uh, the Fed, not so much. But these uh, rising interest rates have really weighed on uh, on technology stocks lately. Mm -hmm, that's right. And uh, you can't even see how sky high <laughs> it is really here. It's getting covered up by another line on the chart. Here's a kind of a visual representation of that 10 year yield there, Ken. And we also want to take a look at the Russell 2000 today. So a huge move uh, with this upside reversal uh, from that uh, short term bottom there. But getting hit again today, we are now at the 21 day line for small caps. Yeah, and you can see volume uh, was pretty heavy in the IWM today. It looks like it's going to come come in, uh, you know, higher than what we saw on uh, on Wednesday. We also saw higher volume on the Nasdaq and the S and P five hundred today. So it looks like uh, yet another uh, distribution day for you know not only the Russell but for the Nasdaq and the S and P uh, as well. This is a you know this is a problem for the uh, for the Nasdaq. This is going to be distribution day number six, I believe. So, in fact, if we can uh, just go back to a daily chart of of the Nasdaq and and you can. Can see uh, the the distribution that really started in the index after it hit a high of 14 uh, 175. So distribution is synonymous with institutional selling. Obviously, a lot of money rotating out of uh, growth stocks. We also saw a fair amount of distribution in in recent weeks in the S and P 500. But all of these uh, reopened stocks, uh, you know, pushed the S and P 500 to a new high. Even though we were seeing you know signs of institutional selling in the S and P 500 as as well. So it's really the Nasdaq that uh, looks to be uh, you know the same story. It looks to be in the most uh, uh, trouble here. And um, I think the percentage decline today was the, the you know, have to go all the way back to October mm -hmm. 28th uh, to find a, a 3% uh, decline. Yeah, so that is definitely not very positive, but it wasn't all gloomy skies today, Ken. Williams Sonoma, ticker WSM, had a very strong reaction to its quarterly earnings report, gaining almost 19% on the day. A huge gap out of this cut base here, that relative strength line hitting a new high. We have bottom line growth of 85%, an acceleration of top line growth hitting 24%. So a really impressive technical move today here from William Sonoma. Yeah, the stock uh, closed just outside the 5% uh, buy zone from that 151.26 uh, uh, buy point. But, um, you know, this is uh, obviously a top performing retailer. Uh, three months ago, they had a very strong quarter. You noted the accelerating uh, revenue growth in recent quarters. Uh, you know, a lot of these stocks that are producing these uh, really, really big, uh, big earnings in recent quarters, obviously, they're going to have tough, uh, eventual tough uh, comparisons. Mm -hmm. So some analysts are wondering, are they going to be able to maintain this rate of growth as the economy uh Re reopen. So that is uh, that is a question, but we did take the opportunity to add uh, Williams uh, Sonoma today to uh, uh, to leaderboard because we like these uh, breakouts uh, from consolidations or, or cut bases, and we uh, we got it in Williams Sonoma. It's probably a little risky buy at, at current levels, but we like these gaps gaps up because if it's truly a strong stock, we'll get some sideways uh, some sideways action after the gap up, and um, you know, for new buyers can can get an alternate uh, entry point. That's right. And uh, this is maybe where an intraday chart could have helped you a little bit looking at that uh, 
hour in uh, the first hour of action rather and uh, putting the odds in your favor, maybe seeing it get to uh, that out of that first little consolidation after the gap up just to make sure that uh, the opening price uh, wouldn't be the highest price of the day because sometimes that happens on these earnings gaps. Yeah, absolutely. And in fact, in the early stages of trading with uh, WSM, it, it actually faded uh, uh, pretty badly, but it didn't take long for the stock to get up near session highs. And it really, uh, you know, it, it made a strong move over the 165 level, but the broad market really just started to weaken and weaken and weaken. So for WSM to, to finish in the top half of its intraday uh, range, I'd call that a small, uh, small victory mm -hmm. and uh, very heavy volume. And, uh, you know, some short interest in this stock, but not, uh, I wouldn't call this just a, a total short squeeze today. Uh, I think uh, the short uh, position, uh, you know, five, five days, um, uh, five days based on the stock's average daily volume, it would take five days to cover the short position in the stock. But when you look at the total number of shares held, held short compared to the uh, mm -hmm. float, it's less than 10%. So I wouldn't call it a heavily shorted stock, but, you know, great earnings report. Uh, they announced a new uh, $1 billion share buyback, and they also raised their dividend to uh, 59 cents from uh, 53 cents. So a lot of good news. Mm -hmm. The story definitely there with William Sonoma, people either buying their first homes or upgrading homes in those COVID era, uh, era revamping the inside of their houses. So we'll, we'll definitely keep tabs on William Sonoma. And you know what else moved big on its earnings report today. Upstart, ticker UPST, got a huge kickstart from today's quarterly earnings report. The first quarter uh, reported as a, a public company. This uh, stock went public last December at 20 a share and had a great initial IPO run-up, Ken, but got hit very hard, so kind of fell off of our radar, but this puts it squarely back in focus, this huge move, I mean, almost doubling on the day. I mean, there's something that investors are really liking about Upstart right now. Well, I think what they really liked was this uh, acquisition of Prodigy uh, Software, and they're a, a provider of cloud-based uh, automotive retail software. And the, and the company said that this acquisition acquisition is really going to accelerate uh, Upstart's uh, move into providing uh, affordable AI enabled auto loans, which is just a huge market. So I think that is uh, people look at this acquisition as having a lot of synergy and something that uh, that Upstart is going to be able to uh, monetize. Now, of course, you see a 39% jump in uh, revenue, um, nice acceleration from 32% growth uh, three months ago. Uh, again, this is uh, you know a very powerful move. When you see volume this uh, this heavy, there were definitely some uh, some institutions in there in their buying. So do you? Do you buy it up here? Probably not. But similar to William Sonoma, I mean, this is a really strong start, and this uh, acquisition of Prodigy Software is really going to uh, impact the bottom line and top line uh, significantly. You'd expect the stock to be able to hold uh, hold gains here for the most part, move sideways. Uh, this is uh, another just great stock for the for the watch list to see if it can hold gains, move sideways, and then uh, maybe we get a better entry point. And some can slim traditionalists may see that uh, negative on the earnings number uh, to not be a, a good sign, but we've seen the market really rewarding that strong top line growth. You mentioned the acceleration, Ken, and Upstart really has that new. Today's move does appear to be a game changer. Got that new price high, this acquisition. So it does have a lot going for it. Forward-looking earnings estimates also look promising. So uh, yeah, we'll have to see if the, the technical action can can hold up here and uh, the stock can shape up a new buying opportunity. It was a, it was a nice, uh, nice winner on leaderboard uh, for us. We did participate in a, a lot of this stock's uh, game when it broke, broke out uh, well, right around 50 and then ran up to uh, 105. It started to pull back and we eventually took, uh, took, uh, took profits. Uh, we gave some, some gains away, but we're able to, to lock in a, um, lock in a profit here. So uh, this one's definitely back on our uh, radar. Again, not going to buy it up here, but uh, if we can get some good uh, tight tight action on the daily and the weekly chart, uh, we like um, we like it when a stock holds gains after uh, after a bullish move like mm -hmm. this. If it can do that, um, you know, it may uh, may give us a good entry. 
Fantastic. And we also want to check back in on Pinterest. The story continues here with the social media stock, which was our stock of the day yesterday. We were pointing out in that article as well as IBD Live in the morning that yesterday looks like a good time to be taking some profits, Ken, if you really were just wanting to hold on to this one through that last sharp sell-off uh, with it hitting resistance at that 50-day line. Uh, you know, things were looking uh, somewhat positive yesterday for, for tech stocks and the NASDAQ, but this 50-day line really proving to be a uh, resistance level here, Ken. Right. And you can see how the stock was rallying back in, in recent days and came right up to its 50-day moving average. But look at the volume. There really was just not a, a lot of volume, especially in the past four uh, up sessions. Uh, so you had some heavy volume declines when the stock or higher volume declines when the stock took out its 50-day moving average, uh, kind of wedging higher in light volume. So uh, to me, this uh, this stock, I mean, clearly it's, uh, it's flashing profit-taking uh, signals. Uh, if you if you still have a gain on the stock, it looks like this is uh, is probably just going to you know calm down and, and pause and, and rest for a while. But uh, sellers uh, still look like they're in control here, and, and frankly, a lot of other technology stocks uh, are showing very similar action, coming up to their 50 days and getting uh, turned away. We saw that with uh, PayPal today, P Y uh, P Y P L. Uh, this is another uh, leaderboard stock. Nvidia getting turned away at its 50-day moving average. Uh, the number of stocks that fell below their 50-day lines and and uh, are getting turned away, uh, just indicating more weakness. Uh, there's a pretty, pretty large supply of them out there right now. Mm -hmm, that's right. And it's exactly why we've been focusing on this uh, rotation out of tech, looking at all of these other uh, areas of the market, presenting actionable setups and not trying to go back to the same well of uh, what worked in 2020, even though these stocks have seen very impressive moves and they have that, uh, that fundamental story intact, but the chart action, not there. Yeah, I mean, like I, I've been kind of beating this uh, drum, but I'm, uh, you know, looking at uh, big winners in, in 2020, like a, a Zoom video or a, a Peloton or a, a DocuSign, you know, it's, uh, you know, whether whether or not these stocks are going to be able to resume market leadership is a very big question mark right now, only because they've fallen so far uh, off their highs. When we do get that sign of strength in the NASDAQ and we do get a follow through day and we start to see money flowing back into the NASDAQ and technology stocks, we're likely going to see a new uh, crop of leaders. Many of them might be, um, you know, IPOs. It could be an, an upstart. Uh, it's just, you know, you're going to see a lot of opportunities in, in new issues. But uh, the stocks that were the biggest leaders in 2020, many are not going to be able to, uh, to lead the next uh, uptrend in the NASDAQ. Mm -hmm. Which is what is so great about IBD is we're not just looking at the fundamentals. We're not just looking at the technicals. We're really combining the two and looking at all of these different ingredients that make stocks great. And there's no perfect stock out there, but we do try to put the odds in our favor by really harnessing the power of that technical strength with those fundamental ingredients as well. And you guys are doing that every day on Leaderboard, which we have free access for right now. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So uh, we're, you know, halfway, halfway through free access uh, week, uh, no credit card needed. Um, you can just go to, um, I think you can go to invest, uh, leaderboard.investors.com. There's uh, right on the homepage of uh, investors.com. There's a banner right at the top. Mm -hmm. You can uh, test, test run it. We've uh, been fairly active uh, uh, this week. Again, we added uh, Williams uh, Sonoma uh, today, added some new names uh, earlier in the week, uh, put a name on the watch list today. So um, just uh, giving, uh, giving people a lot of a uh, lot of ideas mm -hmm. that's right so definitely check that out just to reiterate ken's point there go to the homepage of investors.com you're going to see a, a top banner there or some other messaging in our spotlight area about free access you can click on that to check it out all right everyone thanks for tuning in and we'll see you right back here tomorrow